Hi guys, it's Carrie again. So I have been wanting to talk about this particular topic for a little while. Um, but, you know, I've been trying to gather my thoughts on it. And with what I had to do yesterday, I guess it's a good time to bring it up. And I'm sorry, I'm, I, I, I'm not as prepared to talk about it as I had wanted to be because I didn't really get to sit down and and like think everything through that I want to talk about. So this will just be a stream of consciousness. Um, I have decided not to date. I am a person who's very affectionate, very loving, and I really, really need love and affection in my life. So my natural urge is to be with someone because I want love and I want to be loved. <sighs> with my last relationship, it became pretty obvious to me, not so much to my partner, but to me, I did not spend enough time just single and working on myself before I got into a relationship with him. And this was because I started having anxiety over the relationship. The relationship was causing me anxiety when it should not have. I mean, my partner cared a lot about me. He wasn't cheating on me. He wasn't doing anything mean. And yet, because I still had not healed from the one before that who cheated on me, I had only been single for about three months. I, I had not healed from that. I was insecure in a way I had never been insecure before in a relationship. And the relationship that had no major problems was causing me so much anxiety. So instead of being just a source of joy, which it should have been, it was a really good relationship, it caused me such high stress levels. And it really shouldn't have. And my partner didn't realize I was feeling this way because I knew it was my own insecurities. It wasn't him. It was all me. All of it. Because I am fortunate enough that I recognize that this is actually different for me. This is not how I've been in the past in my relationships. For other people, maybe this is how they've always been. So they wouldn't have that to compare it to. For me... I've never been like that. I have never been someone who's like, why aren't they responding? Why aren't they talking to me? Why aren't they responding? Like, is there like an underlying message here? Do they hate me now? You know, it's it's been a few hours. Why aren't they talking to me? I have never been like that before. The one before that, I lived with him and we had opposite work schedules and we would go days without talking because... We just didn't see each other, and we didn't really text and call a whole lot. Sometimes we would, but I I didn't just sit there and think, oh, it's been four hours since he last texted me. Why isn't he responding to me? You know? And so I recognized that is a new trait for me. That type of insecurity is a new trait for me that started when I started to feel very <sighs> insecure in my value because I kept thinking, why would my boyfriend of four years cheat on me if I were good enough? Because I just kept thinking about that. I was like, what did I do wrong? Why would he cheat on me if I were good enough? And I... I was just always thinking about it and trying to figure it out. Trying to figure out, like, was I not pretty enough? Was I not smart enough? Was I not funny enough? Was I not sexy enough? Was I not creative enough? Was I not sweet enough? And I just was, like, killing myself trying to figure out what my deficiencies were. And I was still feeling that way when I got into a relationship with the new person. And something I learned is, yeah, it can feel really nice to have love again, 
but that doesn't erase the thoughts that are in your head. You, if you went into that relationship with insecurities, you're still going to have those insecurities. You might have a distraction from them, but since you associate being with that person as the only thing separating you from unhappiness, you are going to be terrified of losing them. And because you're feeling insecure already and you you fear losing them, you're going to feel like you're not good enough to keep them. And then you're going to constantly be afraid of losing them. You're going to be afraid that someone else is going to interest them and they're going to leave. You're going to be afraid that they're just going to lose interest. You're going to be afraid that you're going to upset them and it's going to be enough to make them leave. No matter what you do, like you're going to be walking on eggshells in your own relationship for no real reason. Even if they are like the most wonderful person, they're the most honest, they're the most loving, they are the most trustworthy and the most loyal. Even if they compliment you and everything, if you go into it feeling like that, like that kind of insecure, you are going to keep feeling that way. So even like, you know, when they're there and everything seems to be fine, you're going to be like, oh, okay, I'm fine. And then say like they have a quiet moment and and maybe they're not usually quiet. You're going to start to think, what are they thinking? Is it about me? And maybe it's not. A lot of times it might not be. Maybe they were just thinking about, I don't know, their grandma from when they were a child. Or maybe they were thinking about bills they need to pay. Or maybe they were just taking a quiet moment to enjoy nature. You know, it doesn't always have to be a bad thing about you. But because you're insecure, you're feeling that way already. Like you are looking for reasons to justify your fear and your insecurity. And that's how I felt. That is how I felt so much. My partner was wonderful to me, but because I went into the relationship being insecure and having anxiety already and feeling so needy, I had never been so needy before as a partner. In other relationships, I had never been so needy, but I was so needy in this relationship. I don't know if he realized how needy I was because I would censor it because I realized this is not the way I should be. So I would hold back. But like inside, I knew that I was really craving more and more and more and more. We spent a lot of time together and I craved more because I just, I was so afraid of losing him. I was so afraid of being hurt again. I was afraid that he would lose interest in me. I was afraid that he would realize I'm not good enough. That is really not a good way to live. That is not a good way to have a relationship. So, I am... Fortunately, you know, like I said, I was able to kind of hold back and, and he didn't realize a lot of this was going on. But like when we were not together, like, like, you know, cause I lived here and he lived in his place. And if say like he wasn't texting me back and stuff, I would start to feel insecure and I would feel anxious. My heart would be racing and I would just start to wonder, like, do I annoy him? I asked him so many times if I annoyed him. And he always said no, but I couldn't accept that as an answer because I needed a reason to justify what I was feeling. And, um, I would just start to really get upset and anxious and I would start to write stories in my head, like stories that would explain what I'm feeling other than insecurity. But I knew it was insecurity, but then there was like a part of me that was like, well, what if maybe there's a chance that there's some truth behind this. There wasn't, but that's how insecurity works. So the root problems to this started with being insecure. That type of insecurity caused me a lot of anxiety and I lacked confidence in myself. My self-esteem was completely shot when my partner cheated on me. Cause I was like, if someone after four years can cheat on me, like, 
I felt like, you know, after four years, you really know a person generally. If that person could cheat on me, anyone could. And that's how I was feeling. So I was like, four years, that is a long time. That is a very long investment to just throw away. You know, by then, you love each other. That's why you're together. You know, that is a long time to be together and just be like, oh, I don't care. Oops. So, that caused my self-esteem to be completely shot. And that meant that I wasn't loving myself. And that meant that I was dependent on others for happiness. And that is a really big thing. That meant that I was needy and dependent. Now, if you understand psychology and you understand the psychology behind relationships, healthy and not healthy, you would understand all those things I just described. Those are not elements of a healthy relationship. Those are an unhealthy relationship. And before I got with my last partner, I had that kind of unhealthy relationship with myself. And then I brought all of that into a relationship that was actually a really wonderful relationship. And I had that kind of unhealthy relationship with him. Even though he's not totally aware of it, it caused a lot of inner turmoil for me. I mean, it was not fun spending most of my time like on the verge of an anxiety attack just because I couldn't trust that he cared about me like he said that he did. Because I didn't feel like I was good enough. So, that kind of brings me to my point. I need to have a healthy relationship with myself before I can have a healthy relationship with other people. Before, Especially before I can have a healthy romantic relationship. And I feel like I'm getting there and getting more independent. I'm going out and doing stuff by myself. And I don't even have to have friends with me to go do fun things now, which was definitely not the case before. I've been making a very conscious effort to do this. And with my roommate moved out, my anxiety levels have improved a lot. And I'm starting to feel a little bit better self-esteem wise. But I feel like I definitely still have some improvement to make. I mean, I need to be able to love myself and I need to be able to respect myself and not put myself down, you know, and I need a healthier relationship with myself because if I am more independent, then I'm not going to rely on someone else to make me happy. I'm not going to rely on them to take care of me. I'm not going to rely on them to entertain me. I'm not going to rely on them to love me. Because I will be able to do all of that for myself. If I am more independent in my own happiness, I won't be so terrified of losing someone. Because if I lose them, I'll still be okay. Because they were not the only reason for my happiness. If I am more confident and secure... I will have more value in myself. I will respect myself more. I will have a better way to filter people because I will be on my own side. Whenever you try to date when you are heartbroken and insecure, you don't have anyone watching out for you because you're not watching out for you. You are not on your own side because you're going out there desperate. And things that are red flags and things that are obvious and things that maybe you wouldn't have put up with before, you're going to put up with them now because you're desperate to have someone else make you happy. I don't want that. I have been there. I have done that. I have dated people I should not have dated. I have loved people I should not have loved. And they all hurt me a lot. So I would like to do it the healthy way this time. Because I want to be able to be on my side. I want to be able to filter people out. I want to be able to protect myself from those red flags. I want to see the red flags. 
I want to appreciate them and I want to mind them and not go, oh, well, that's probably okay. Like, I've always been so overly forgiving, especially of things like red flags. I didn't always give them the appreciation that they needed because in the past I have been too forgiving of someone's past and hopeful that just because they did things in their past that wouldn't mean that it would affect me and it almost always does. So now I know because I've dated a lot of people who cheated on me. I in my entire dating life have been dating for 16 years have never cheated on even one person. If I can do it I know someone else can. So now if, because it's just not the kind of person I am. And I deserve a person like that. So now, whenever I'm talking to people, I will try to find out if they've cheated on someone before. And there are creative ways you can ask. And if they say they have, no. Red flag, no. I am not even going to do it. I mean, maybe if they were like 14 when they did it, and now they're 35, and and they've always felt so guilty for it. Maybe in that case. But if it was like recent at all, no. If it was more than one relationship, absolutely not. If it was like when they were an adult, I really doubt it. Because past behaviors can often predict future behaviors. So I want to be able to be... I don't, I can't think of like a good term for it, but like maybe like my own guard. Like I want to be able to be the person who is on my side, defending me, protecting me and filtering people out and filtering people in because I am innately naive. I am innately overly trusting and very forgiving, which because it becomes an interesting paradox for me because that means that also I have learned I can't trust my own judgment of people. So then I become very untrusting of everyone. So I want to be able to not have just like one extreme or the other. I want to be able to appreciate people's traits, notice red flags, filter those people out, but then maybe be a little bit more trusting of people who don't should not be filtered out because right now I'm just kind of like afraid of everyone. So those are my reasons for why I'm not dating. I have given myself a goal to go at least until next year without dating. I'm going to try it really hard because, you know, last time I really thought that I was ready and I wasn't. And I do appreciate the partner I got. I mean, I learned so much from him. I love him very much. He was really good to me. And for those of you who don't know, the reason why our relationship ended is not because we weren't working. It's because he didn't get granted his work visa. And he found out he would have to return to India. And then he left three days later. So... That was devastating. But it has given me the opportunity to start over and to really try to embrace me, you know, embrace being Carrie, learn how to like just have my own identity, not as someone's girlfriend, not as someone's partner, not as someone's friend, you know, but just me. And you know, learn how to be happy just by myself. Learn how to make sure that my environment is happy. Learn how to make sure that the relationships I have with people are are healthy. Make sure that my environment, did I say happy or healthy earlier? Whatever. I, I want my environment to be both happy and healthy. I, I want to be able to just make sure that my life in general is happy and healthy. And once I improve the quality of person I am 
and I improve the kind of quality that I can bring into a relationship, which ultimately I'm not doing any of this for a relationship. That is the wrong way to go about this. I mean, that is, of course, like in the future, I'd love to have it. I would love to love someone and I would love for them to love me. But this is all stuff that I need anyway, just to make my life in general better. I need to make my life in general happier. And um, so whether I find someone or not, I can be happy and healthy and I don't need them to make me happy and healthy. And the better of a person I can be and the better quality partner I can be, like the better traits I can bring to a relationship, the better quality partner I can attract. And I know I deserve a good quality partner. I'm a very loving person. I'm a very good partner. And this last relationship, that is not how I normally am. That's how I knew that something was up and I needed more time. Just being single, not dating, not flirting with anyone because then you start to depend on them for attention. And that is kind of not helping you at all. It, yeah, it makes you feel a little bit validated for a little while, but then you are not learning how to give yourself attention and you're still depending on them to make you happy. So I'm not flirting with anyone. I'm not talking to anyone in that sort of way. I'm not dating anyone. And it's been since June, so July, August, September, October, November, it's been five months so far. And it has been very hard. And then right now, there are times where I'm like, yeah, you know what? I feel perfectly fine. Like uh, right now I'm kind of feeling like that. Like, oh, I feel perfectly fine being single. And then there are times when I'm like, I don't feel okay. I really wish I had someone here holding me right now. I don't know if that ever goes away. I hope it does because I'm kind of using that as like a marker of my independence. And I feel like I shouldn't be feeling like that as often as I do whenever I decide that I'm ready to find love. So, um, I have been spending the last five months just working on myself, taking the time I need to learn how to be happy by myself, learn how to relax when I'm by myself because... For that year and a half, I did not relax and learn how to find activities to do, learn how to have fun just by myself, learn how to just not need anyone, not need to talk to friends and family except sometimes about things because I haven't really found them to be super reliable with the exception of a couple. Um, and, and then I kind of feel like I don't want to like just talk to them all the time about everything. That's why I started blogging so I could talk to myself on a camera. If other people listen, then hopefully it's either entertaining or helpful for them. If they don't, then that's okay too. Um, but see, that's another step. Like I am not relying on anyone else when I'm vlogging. I am doing this for myself. I am talking to myself and then I go back and I watch the videos and I listen to what I'm saying. I listen to my tone. I watch my face. I watch my facial expressions and I feel like I learn a lot about myself just from that because, you know, like when you're talking, you don't typically get to see what you look like and sound like. Well, I guess you don't see sound. You would hear it um, from the other person's perspective and like watching in a mirror isn't even the same so it is interesting so that is one of the things I've done getting my roommate to move out that was a huge step in independence in alleviating anxiety and by the way my roommate was my ex-boyfriend who cheated on me if for anyone who might be new um that was a huge, huge, huge step. And then now I've been able to stay home and relax a few times. I haven't had a weekend where I break down crying in a very long time. And by very long, I don't mean like months, but I mean like weeks because I was breaking down crying every single time I had to spend time at home. So 
to go even two or three weeks without having that happen. That is really, really amazing. So my goal is to stay single until I have a better relationship with myself before I try to have a relationship with someone else. That is my goal. It's a very important goal to me. I didn't accomplish it last time. I, I tried, but eventually, I can tell you what happened after being single for about, let's see, two months, I was feeling so anxious. I got sick, super sick, and I wanted someone to come take care of me, someone who loved me to come take care of me. And it made me feel extra alone because I didn't have anyone to come take care of me. And that was why I started like my dating profiles and started trying to find someone. And that's how I met my, my last relationship. I mean, that was what triggered it. That, so how could something triggered by a feeling of dependency be anything but that? So I don't want to do it that way again. I, around two months, single, I was feeling like that. I definitely was. I was like, man, it would just be so easy for me to go find someone to kind of fill that space and, and like, make me feel better. But then I remembered in my last relationship, it really didn't make me feel better. I was anxious all the time. And... I was moody all the time, too, and, and sometimes I would be kind of crabby with my partner, and he didn't deserve that, and the moodiness was a result of this anxiety that was constantly bubbling underneath the surface because of my insecurity. So, I um, made it past that point now. Now I'm feeling more and more comfortable being alone. I still get sad. I still miss him. I still love him. I still wish that he could get his work visa, stay in this country, and then we could be together. I do. I'm not holding out on that. Sorry, I'm going to start crying because that is a really emotional thought. And honestly, right now, the idea of dating anyone else is just like, it's such an unsatisfying idea. It's actually a sickening idea. And I can't date him. So like right now, the only person I would even want to date is him, really. If I really think about it, that's him. But really, what I need to do is get to the point where I'm just dating myself and taking myself out on dates and, and treating myself well and you know, the things that I would do for a partner, do them for myself. Those, like, I am a great, great, great girlfriend. I know I am. I actually, I kind of rock at it. I am very good at making my partner feel special. I need to be doing those things for myself. So, once I feel like I have accomplished all of this, then I can about dating again. So far, I've been very good about abstaining. I have made it through those feelings of despair and loneliness and heartbroken moments where I'm just like wishing that I had someone there holding me and, you know, playing with my hair and kissing me and telling me that they love me. I have made it through those moments. I have not signed up on any dating apps. I have not been flirting with people. I have not talked to anyone about dating them. So I've been very good about that. I am holding my promise. It's November. Next year is it's only like a couple of months away. If I'm not ready at that point, I'm not going to make myself feel like I need to date then. I'm going to really evaluate it and see if I have met my goals. So... I think I've explained enough about my reasoning and what my goals are and what I'm hoping to do. 
All of this ties into what happened over the weekend and yesterday. On Friday, I went to Mystic Lake Casino. I saw Pat Oswald. He was really funny. It was great. My friend who did the painting thing with me, the one who went and had donuts with me, she's like a really great friend in general. She and I went to go see it together. She had an extra ticket because her boyfriend was able to show up. So I actually got to see it for free. And beforehand, she met this random guy. And she's just a really nice person. This is how she is in general. They were ordering food. Uh, and he was, I'm guessing, next in line or something. And she paid for his food. <laughs> That's just the kind of person she is. She's very, very generous. And um, I found her, and then she introduced me to him. And at first I thought that he was her friend. Um, but then I realized, no, they had just met. So we said goodbye. We went to the show. After the show, we ran into him again. And then I talked to him for a very long time. She and I both talked to him for a long time. Uh, and then she left to go play Cosmic Bingo. And then I continued talking to him because I was going to leave. But as I'm sure you can tell, I am a chatterbox. I talk a lot. It's the same whenever I talk to people. It's the same when I talk to myself. I talk a lot. So... I was, um, what was I saying? I needed to leave because I needed to work from home on a Saturday morning, so I needed time to go to sleep because I had to wake up pretty early. So uh, that's why I stayed behind. I didn't play bingo with her. And then I was talking to him, and I was going to leave. His brother and friend showed up, and I walked away, and then I started talking to them again. And, and, like, I mean, I talked to him for probably, like, two or three hours. I had a really good time talking to him. He was very nice and funny and interesting. And then as I was leaving the final time, he got my number. He asked for it, and he asked if I could ha if he could have it. And I thought, well, you know, I really enjoyed talking to this person. Sure. I would love to be able to continue talking to this person and hang out with this person. So, <laughs> he texted me, and I texted him, and we were kind of talking a little bit, and he asked if I wanted to hang out with him, and I said, yeah, because I, I would. So, I kind of figured he liked me, just based off of, like, our interactions, and I am kind of very na naive and oblivious sometimes to that kind of attention, but my friend said, you know, that guy was really into you. And I said, well, he did ask for my number and asked if we could hang out again. So I kind of picked up on it. And this caused me so much anxiety. I had agreed to hang out with him this upcoming Saturday. And then he was referring to it as a date. And I totally understand why. I mean, I'm not going to say that, like, that was uh, an illogical conclusion for him. I mean given that a lot of people probably assume that women and men typically are heteronormative and they might befriend the same sex and date the opposite sex, you know, rather than the other way around or, or maybe having a lot of opposite sex friends, not so many same sex friends, and uh, dating both. Like in my case, all my friends are guys. So to me, it's not unusual to hang out with a guy. I don't date my friends. Um, however, I some of my friends have turned into partners just because I need to know someone very well. I'm very selective about like a lot of things, especially now i now that I'm trying to be even better about it, um, it takes me a while to know if I like someone in a romantic way. I don't base it off of my first, like, interaction with them, I, because I feel like that is just based on appearances and, and maybe some other shallow things, 
But how can you really know after, like, barely knowing someone, like, talking to them for just a few hours, how can you really know if you guys are compatible and if you like each other enough to contemplate a meaningful relationship that could turn into a long-term relationship? And I don't do the casual dating, like, um, you know, never with, like, without the intention of ever committing. If I go on dates with someone, it's because I'm trying to figure out if they would be a good match for me for a long-term, meaningful relationship. If I have a relationship with someone, it's because I am anticipating and hoping that it's going to be a long-term relationship. Not that it's going to be, like, three months until we get bored of each other and then move on to the next. And that's not how I do it. So for me, because of... Um, the type of relationship I'm seeking, I need to know someone pretty well before I even like even entertain the idea of dating them. So, I mean, sometimes friends might turn into something other than friends because of that. Um, but I don't like casually hook up with my friends or anything like that. Like I don't do that. I don't casually hook up with anyone. But um, so that's what I'm saying. Anyway, I can understand why he thought I was agreeing to go on a date. And I think whenever I agreed to it, I was aware that he might have meant it as a date. And it caused me a lot of anxiety. And then he was, you know, really, like, very excited. And I was excited to hang out with him, too. Um, but under a different context. And, uh... So he was so excited and and then he was saying, like giving me ideas for future dates too. And they sounded fun. Like going to Sky Zone, I loved Sky Zone. Going bowling, I like bowling. Bowling's fun. I'm not very good at it, but I like it. Uh I mean they weren't none of it was bad. Like he didn't do anything wrong. I really want to stress this. He did nothing wrong. He was funny. There was nothing wrong with the way he looked, and looks aren't that important to me anyway. There was nothing wrong with, like, the way he interacted with me. He was very nice. Uh, he was interesting. I felt like, you know, we could probably get along. So, I want to stress, there was nothing wrong with him. Like, whenever I was considering all of this and getting anxious over the idea of going on a date with him. The reason why I got anxious is because I know I am not ready to date. I'm not over my last relationship. I'm not even over the one from before that. I am not over my last partner. I still love him. And if he were to be able to stay in the country and to tell me that he wanted to be with me, you know, like, hey, I, I don't have to go back to India anymore. I I can live here and I want to be with you. Like, I would do it. I would. So that's not fair for me to hide from someone if I want to date them. That's not fair for me to ask them to be okay with it. And, and that's just not fair for me to ask someone to wait for me until I am over it and ready. So, I mean, there were lots of levels of unfair on that. And then I was kind of, like, feeling anxious because I knew that if I told him all of this and told him I couldn't go on a date with him but that we could hang out as friends, I knew it would upset him, disappoint him, hurt his feelings, maybe crush him. And I didn't want to do any of that. I mean, like, I really didn't want to hurt him. And I didn't want him to feel like it was anything he did wrong. It absolutely, like, I know it sounds really cliche to say, it's not you, it's me. But hopefully the first, like, 30 minutes of this video explained enough about how, in this case, it totally was me. It absolutely 100% was me. No matter who it was, unless it was my last partner, I would have said no. Um, so... And I didn't want him to think that way, and as predicted, he kind of did think that way. 
so I didn't want that. And then I was kind of thinking, well, maybe, I mean, how often do you run into someone who is, like, so genuinely nice and interesting and funny? Maybe I can just give it a try. And I was thinking about that, and I was like, well, then I could avoid the confrontation. I hate confrontation. And I was like, well, I could avoid the confrontation of um, having to, you know, crush his little heart. <laughs> and then maybe, maybe it might work out. But then I kept thinking, but if I go out with him, knowing I'm not ready to date, one, I'm breaking a promise I made to myself. And two, that still is not fair to him because in the and I still know I'm not ready to date. So what is the point? And then I started thinking the same anxieties I have anytime I go out on like a first, second, third date is, you know, people want affection. Like they want to kiss and, and like hold hands. And I don't want them to kiss me on the first date or the second date or the third date. I don't want them to hold my hand. I might hug them on the first date. I might hold their hands like on the second or third. But really the first few dates for me, like if you're going on a date with me, unless we already know each other like super well, like we're, we're best friends or something, it's more about us hanging out as friends so I can kind of get to know you better. It's not about us being on like a romantic date. That's why I don't want them all over me. Like, a lot of times, especially if you're meeting people from online, this person's a total stranger. The last thing I want is them all over me. That just kind of grosses me out. I mean, like, if you guys want that, that's fine. You do you. For me, <laughs> if, if I just, if this is my first time meeting someone and I don't really know them super well, I don't want their tongue in my mouth. That's just, ugh. I don't. And then I get the anxiety, like, whenever I go out with people, that they're going to, like, try, and then I'm going to have to make it all awkward whenever I turn them down, and <sighs> I started to get that anxiety, like, what if he tries to kiss me? What if he tries to hold my hand? I don't want him kissing me. I don't want him holding my hand. And what if I hug him, and then he kind of takes that as, like, a sign that he should do more, and, like, I always get anxious, like, with the the first few hugs, because, like, what if they try to, like, sneak in a kiss as they're hugging me? I mean, like, my brain goes in very fast circles with this anxiety train. So, I was thinking about all of that. And then I, it's just like, and I was talking to my friend, the girl who had bought him dinner. And I was talking to her, and I told her everything, and I was like, this is what I'm battling right now. And then she said, don't do anything unless you feel completely comfortable as far as, like, whether or not I should go out with him. So, yesterday, I had to tell him, we can hang out, but I need to change the context. I can't date anyone right now. And I explained to him, and probably more information than he needed to know, but I really wanted him to understand, it is nothing he did, it is all me. Explain to him, I have been single for a few months. I am not over my last relationship. I still love that person. I don't think it would be fair for me to ask you to be okay with that. I don't be, think it would be fair for me to ask you to uh, wait until I'm ready. And I don't think it would be fair to hide it from you. And I don't think it's fair for me to date anyone when I'm feeling that way. It's not even fair to myself. I promised myself that I would be single until I can have a healthy relationship. And I'm incapable of healthy dating right now. I mean, it's very humbling. It's, it's very hard. And embarrassing. And it almost feels shameful to have to admit to someone else, you don't have your stuff together. Like, that your, your life right now is kind of a mess. You're cleaning it up. You're making progress. It's not as messy as it was. But it's still messy. It's very humbling and vulnerable. And he didn't seem to be upset with me, but he kind of took it out on himself. He was really down on himself. So he canceled the plans. Because I told him, we can hang out. It's up to you. But I need you to understand it's going to be as friends. 
he canceled the plans. He said that he wasn't sure if he could take it that way. So that was the very uncomfortable thing I had to do. That was good self-care. But, and I was proud of myself for doing it because it was so hard for me to do it. And I, it was causing me so much anxiety. And I felt so bad. I felt awful for hurting him. But, um, it was something that I needed to do. And that's the reasoning why. And I've been wanting to talk about all of this, like, why I remain single. And why I am not dating or trying to date. But I had not done it yet because I knew it was going to be a really long, rambly video. And also, if I had tried to do it previously, I probably would have cried the whole time. But right now, I'm kind of in a good place with, like, my roommate moved out. My anxiety is a lot better. My depression has been better. So I was able to do it without crying, although my eyes did water up a few times when I think about that one I love. <sighs> So, I hope that you guys maybe find something helpful in this. I know it was very long. I'm already at 46 minutes and 15 seconds. I, I hope that it's helpful. I hope that it's informative. Maybe if you've had similar struggles or you're struggling now, maybe it will give you encouragement to really stick it out and try to make sure that you have a healthy relationship with yourself so that you can have a healthy relationship with life in general before you try to have a healthy relationship with another person. And then maybe if you've already been through this, maybe you can share some of your wisdom with me and with anyone else who might see it in a comment on this video. You can share your wisdom on your experience and how you got through it, and um, what gave you strength. Sorry, sorry. My uh, phone ran off space, and my video shut off. I got changed into pajamas. Now my phone's dying. So I'm just going to wrap it up. If you have anything that you can share that might be helpful to me or to others, please feel free to share. I hope you found this video to be helpful, and thank you so much for staying and listening. I know it was a very long video, but I do think it's a very important thing. A lot of people don't want to put in the work to better themselves, but really shortcuts don't make you get to happiness faster. Putting in this work will. It will actually make you feel real happiness eventually. So it's hard, but I do think it'll be worth it. I wish everyone luck. I love everyone. I hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you. Bye.